Hi everyone and uh, welcome to uh, this year's group build uh, annually run by Joachim and Marcus. Um, if you're not aware of these two guys' wonderful work then their links are down below in the description. Please go and check out their channels and like and subscribe their fantastic work and it's not too late if you too would like to join in the fun of this group build. So then Steve, says Sir John Mills, what are you going to be entering into this year's group build? Well, Sir John Mills, I've decided to use Airfix's 135th scale Austin K2 and I'm going to convert it into the one that's used in the iconic Ice Cold in Alex film, better known as Cathy. Now, three vehicles we used in this film, uh, the standard K2 itself, but uh, the most common one that 95% of the film was based on was one where they actually put the uh, bodywork on top of a CMP 4x4 chassis. So that's where a lot of the involvement is going to be, looking at changing the wheels, the chassis, lots of extra detail work on the interior and the exterior too. So really looking forward to the challenge of this uh, project. So if something that you'd like to enjoy as well, then please feel free to pull up a chair and let's go do some modelling. Now the Airfix kit itself is well known, um, there are quite a few reviews on YouTube about it. Uh, Jason, our good friend Jason over at Model Kit Stuff's done a wonderful review and build of this kit, so feel free to pop over and check his channel out. Again, his details are below in the description. Now to help me along the way, I've uh, bought some resin uh, wheels, which have the different hubs that we're going to need for the wheels, which we'll look into later. Uh, red zebra some lovely resin extras to put in the back pillows blankets that sort of thing also i'm going to be using the eduard set um it's not been fantastic but obviously i'll go in more detail with that later for example this front part is completely wrong um and i've actually had to buy some uh, eduard mesh and uh, we'll actually be making our own front cover uh, for the bonnet later There are some other odds and sods that I'll show you as the build goes along, but these are the main extras that I've bought for the actual build itself. I've also bought a second kit. Uh, this is the Chevy uh, made by IBG Models. Uh, the reason for this is this is a CMP 4x4 uh, chassis on it, um, and I'll be nicking some parts from this to help with the actual conversion. Uh, but there'll be more on this uh, in future episodes of this build. Now, throughout the whole of my videos, you'll see a lot of uh, photos that I've taken from the film, and I will have written on it for IPO, purely for copyright issues. I don't want to get done for anything like that. And as you can see, this is just for information purposes only. So we're going to look, tackle the tires. Uh, these are famous Dunlop tires with their distinctive tread mark as you can see from these film uh, pictures from the films. Now the front wheels, they have uh, the distinctive round hubs that you find on a lot of CMPs. And also they do have a distinctive 12 nut uh, configuration along the outside. Now the rear ones, again, they have strange uh, rear hubs, uh, which again, I'm gonna have to make. And these have separate nuts on the inside as well. Now, I'm not actually gonna be using the actual tires from the resin kit, but anybody who's interested in using these, uh, just give you a bit of a review. Beautifully made, nice crisp detail on them. As you can see, a bit of flash there, uh, but it can easily be sanded off. And these have the standard eight nut um, outside on the rims. And you have different connectors there for the interior as well. But these are the bad boys that I wanted these for. So I have the rear hubs and the front hubs that are used as in the film itself. Now I'm actually going to be using the Airfix kit wheels. Um, they come in two halves and the tread isn't too bad. It's, it's quite uh, uh, sharply molded so I was quite pleased to use those. And what I'm going to have to do is take out the um, middle part. These are the standard uh, Austin K2 hubs. That you'll find uh, but as we've already discussed completely different to the one that's found on the actual vehicle in uh, the movie because bear in mind this uh, movie was made back in the uh, early 50s or mid 50s not quite sure we can't it might be in 57 actually 
um and uh the the obviously is somewhat different to the uh, k2s from back in world war ii now these are my odds and sods that i use for my uh, drill bits and santa was kind enough to send me a whole new batch as well so hoping to get my teeth into some of these on this particular project as this is saves a lot of time and effort using uh, the drill bits uh, rather than the actual your sanding sticks and your own handheld drills and this is my combi drill that I like to use um, good friend of mine Jim Rafe recommended this to me several years ago and it's been my, by my side ever since controllable speeds and very useful and does the job so what we're doing here on the front wheel of the airfix kit is just taking out that uh, central hub what I'm trying to do is to keep the uh, nuts uh, on the outer rim uh, so this is quite a delicate operation so I took off most of the uh, detail uh, with the combi drill and then I got my knife in there to try and take out some more however I this I did find this was starting to damage the actual interior rim itself so I went back to the combi drill itself and just took out all of that excess and got as close to the central part as I dared to and then I'm matter of getting out my velorb files I have a circular one and a square one uh, in the, my tool kit these are superb files but for this job yeah it, it wasn't really um, the tool that I needed so I found this one in the new stuff that Santa bought me for Christmas uh, really lucky that it just fitted in and this is just basically a, sta a, a sanding drill bit and just did quick manual sand and as you can see I've got a nice per perfect circle so now that I've drilled out those central bits I've now got um, somewhere where I can put those resin uh, hubs just a matter of putting some plastic card on the back and then that was glued into place uh, with uh, Tamiya Extra Thin and then what I had to do was to take off the uh, nuts and I did this carefully with these particular tools and then I thought oh, I just can't be bothered uh, so I got the old big sander out and just sanded the whole lot off now I've got these big uh, guillotine scissors that I've had for a long time great tool to have if you're a scratch builder and then this enabled me to munch right through the uh, resin uh, stalks on the uh, hubs and they came off in one foul swoop and then what it is just a matter of getting the uh, sandy stick out sanding that as level as you possibly can now when sanding resin it generates resin dust so you must wear a mask resin dust and lungs do not go together at all now over the years I've picked up a lot of master club uh, nuts and bolts uh, all different sizes all the way down to 0.2 all up to uh, one mil and for this particular one I've decided to use these and it's just a matter of cutting the uh, nuts off of the stalks um, and then adding them to the actual wheel as you can see I've placed some detail on there to help me where to put it now I like to use Johnson clear now I don't think you can buy this stuff anymore um, I look after this uh, really careful because I like I say it is a rare beast but the great thing about uh, using the clear varnish is that um, you can still move the nuts around on the item before it all dries so it's just a matter of using a brush putting the clear on then haphazardly putting the nuts in and as you can see they stick they don't move however if you apply a little bit of pressure as I'm doing here with the tweezers you can then move them around into the position that you want and it's an ideal way of, of eyeing it all up so that it all looks fine once done then all you got to do is leave that to dry overnight and then get your extra thin in the morning and just give it a a, a gentle coverage and then that will all be fixed into place then it's a matter of putting the two halves together that little bit of plastic card i put on had to be trimmed back just a little bit to fit on now the rear hubs they needed some extra detailing so i got myself some uh, 0.5 uh, mil styrene rod and uh, to make it half round you just need to scrape off one side so that side is flat and then just cut down a few of the stalks 
and then using CA glue uh, with resin parts that was added onto the side and once they were all dry they were all trimmed back and they were added into the central hub as you can now see and then if you look very carefully at those black and whites there are a few little struts in there as well so those were added in a similar way so that's the rear these are the fronts very pleased with how they all turned out however I wanted to add some uh, lettering um, so I've found some plastic card lettering now yes I admit it's not going to be perfect and it's not going to be exactly the same but to me it was better to have a bit of detail than no detail at all very fine small letters and numbers and each wheel these were Dunlops 10.5 by 16s so it's just a matter of cutting out the lettering and then gluing them in place however they were quite uh, deep um, as far as thickness goes and they didn't really or well, they stood out a bit too much um, for 135th scale so it's a matter of going around sanding them down and then what's sanded down cleaned up uh, using the extra thin and yeah they're okay uh, they're, they're not perfect they're certainly not how they should look uh, you know because the fonts incorrect the, the size is incorrect but to me it was a bit of fun I like the extra detail on it and I'm looking forward to seeing how they get painted up now the bigger problem was the spare wheel because the spare wheel in the back of the one in ice cold in Alex is a Pirelli tire as you can see here and this tire was also used in the famous scene uh, where they changed the wheel in the desert so here we had to change not only the inner wheel but also the tread so what I did here uh, was to take all the nuts off and then I realized that the whole configuration was incorrect um, so what I did is I punched out a, um, a piece of disc and that was then glued into place and then what I did was I got some very fine uh, slater strip added all of the outer ridges onto the tread and then the outer ridges were filled in with very small uh, strips again each therefore having a box on each of the tread not perfect I admit but I was quite happy with the detailing as you can see I've also marked out the new hole configuration and in the same way as I did with the other tyres I've added on those 12 nuts as well then it's a matter of putting the lettering on um, and there we have the full set of now five tyres and I was really pleased with how those turned out so that's the first stage over and done with um, as you will see from all of the videos in this uh, uh, project that I'm doing I'm going to try and add on some uh, photos that were taken from the set behind the scenes whatever you want to call it at the end of the each video just a you know a bit, bit of fun and a bit, very much uh, interesting on how it was done so let's just leave to say thanks very much indeed uh, for popping in and uh, checking out the channel many thanks to all of my subscribers old and new for your continued support of my work and happy modeling everybody